This is the eHealth Radio Network, your source for health advice on demand. And now your host, Eric Michaels. Thanks for joining us once again here on the Health Radio Network. This is your host, Eric Michaels. Today, we're speaking with Mr. Doris Schooler, the CEO and co-founder at Intuition Robotics, which creates empathetic digital companions that positively impact people's lives. The company's first product, LEQ, is an artificial intelligence-driven, proactive social robot for older adults to keep them healthy, active, and independent at home, bridging the gap between them and their health care providers. You got to love it. And Mr. Schooler, thanks for joining us here today on Health Radio. Thanks for having me on. And certainly our pleasure. Looking forward to hearing all the details on this as well. So tell us for starters, what is LEQ and how did you develop this technology? Sure. So, so LEQ is a companion that we developed. It kind of looks like, almost like a lamp that moves <laughs> with a screen next to her. We use body language because as humans, we're prone to understand and relate to body language, so her movement is important. She's proactive, so she initiates the interactions with the older adults. She doesn't wait for them to approach her and give her a command. And what she, what she was designed to do is actually to live together with the older do- adults as a sidekick, if you will, and help them stay independent um, longer at home, deal with the social aspect of loneliness and social isolation. Um, and then we edged that uh, forward and added wellness um, type capabilities like mindfulness and cognitive training and nutrition support and hydration support. We then added the family um, as another circle of connectivity towards her um, so people can use her as a communication platform, send and receive messages and so on. And recently we entered the healthcare market as well. But at, at its core, think of it as a type of proactive, cheerful character that lives with the older adults, acknowledges them, takes an interest in them, remembers what they tell her, um, and creates this relatively interesting and deep relationship with the human. Again, you really have to appreciate technology, and this is one great example of that right here. Now, how have companion robots been affecting seniors' health and well-being at home, and how have they evolved over the past several years? Talk to us about that. Yeah, so we're really the, the first one to try to do this with this population, right? I mean, as you can imagine, this whole space is cutting edge uh, and trying to do that with with um, the first population to really get senior robots being older adults is not what you would assume because they're not necessarily as tech savvy as the rest of the population. Um, that's an understatement. But what we've seen the impact um, to be so far, and this is after LEQ living about 35,000 days with older adults in the U.S., at least three months per older adult. Many have lived with her for over a year. What we're seeing are some very, very interesting um, points of data uh, which are showing just unbelievable engagement levels. A few examples. People share with her proactively what we would call self-reported data uh, every single day. How they're feeling, how they're sleeping, their attitude, their appetite, etc. They go to essentially a piece of plastic and share what's going on with them. Uh, we see that the engagement is extremely high. We measure our uh, efficacy with shared goals that were completed. For example, the person completing mindfulness session or the person learning something new or what have you. We're averaging about 150 completed activities every month, and that doesn't go down as people use her over time. And what's super fascinating to us is that as opposed to, let's say, an Alexa or a Google Assistant where what people use it for are utility, turn on the lights, play music, set a timer, here the interaction is mainly conversational and they're pretty deep. So we're averaging about 15 turns a day. A turn would be a back and forth conversation uh, between the person and, and LEQ. Um, as far as, you know, Higher measures of impact, where we, we still need to study them and have a larger base of users to get to statistically meaningful information. But we, we have seen anecdotal information of her reducing um, the sense of loneliness, increasing the quality of life score, um, and, and hopefully also health and preventative um, aspects as well. Thank you very much for your input on that as well. Much appreciated. Now, why did you decide to expand into healthcare during COVID-19 specifically, and what did you learn that led to this pivot in strategy? Sure. We felt this was a natural expansion for this product, but during COVID, it became really clear because 
most of the users on on the medical community started reaching out to us. So, you know, it's an extreme case where patients could not come and see their primary care provider, right? And and we've all seen it, um, that technology has moved into the home, you know, there are all these stats of 10 years of digitalization happening in one year, et cetera, et cetera. But for the basic older adult that has a harder time using technology, um, the situation was was more extreme. What we also saw, though, is that users were telling LEQ things like, I'm not feeling well, I feel sick, I don't know what to do. And ethically, we, we felt there's a problem. Like what LEQ would do in that case is tell them, well, maybe you should rest and I hope you feel better in the morning, right? And not being able to notify their doctor uh, felt uh, as, as wrong to us. So what ended up happening is we started connecting with value-based care uh, PCPs who have a unique incentive to invest in preventative health for their older adult uh, patients and mainly also detect a change in clinical condition as soon as possible and intervene as soon as possible so that it does not deteriorate to an ED visit or hospitalization, which is, you know, it doesn't do anything good to their financial model. So here, we're, what we're experimenting with is for the first time, clinical teams are working with a robot, think of it as like a remote outpost in the home of the older adult as an extension of the medical team. Um, so about 80% of what we do is not medical in these use cases. We're doing the conversation, uh, we're teaching new things, we're telling jokes, we're doing wellness activities and so on. But as we're detecting interesting self-reported data, we, we share it with the provider. And the provider can also essentially program parts of LEQ and tell us what to look for. For example, if you're pre-diabetic, maybe they want to put you on a regimen that for two weeks you're going to check your glucose for three weeks. Or maybe um, you have uh, CHS and they want you to check your weight daily. And um, maybe they just have a harder time communicating with their patient and they want to be able to know that they can ask a question and it will be delivered to their patient that they will get a response. So that is, those are just a few examples of what we're doing. And then, of course, we're integrating back into the workflows and the pathways of the providers on the back end. Well, this is certainly an exciting bit of information and a report and really appreciate what you're doing in the space as well. Today, we're speaking with Doris Schooler, the CEO and co-founder at Intuition Robotics, which creates empathetic digital companions that positively impact people's lives. He's joined us here today on eHealth Radio's Senior Health and Health News Channels, a part of the eHealth Radio Network. Now, continuing on, what impact do you think LEQ will have on the healthcare field looking ahead? I, I think really it opens up this this new aspect of having a continuous data feed and commu- continuous communication channel in people's homes so that you don't just um, build your data model based on snapshots in time when somebody happens to walk into the clinic or when you have hospitalization or insurance information, but rather continuous. And to me, I mean, there's obviously a way to improve the quality of care to reduce costs, we're starting to work on gap closures, so LEQ can promote gap closures, uh, to reduce the burden on administrative um, um, staff so she can do the appointment reminders and, of course, facilitate telehealth and so on. So I, I think it's, a, it's a potentially a profound effect both on the cost side and the impact side, the actual clinical outcomes. Um, but what I'm, in addition to that, curious to see is how that will change the approach of care or instead of having a doctor's office and a patient at home, you have this kind of new model where there is a continuous presence in the home, um, which is part of the clinical team. Another question, Dor, what role should digital companions play in the grander healthcare market and challenges that doctors face in patient communication? Yeah, sure. I mean, you know, I'm sure your listeners all (laughs) all have a hard time reaching their their patients and and so do insurers and so on. Um, I, I think it's a question of are you able to build trust in a relationship? And once you're able to do that and once you're always acting in the best interest of the patient or the user, uh, I, I think there, there are multiple areas that this can be helpful in. And outside of what we're doing, by the way, I and mean, hopefully there will be other companies doing this and for other sectors as well, that there are people recovering from, from post-acute, um, there are hospital and home settings that are going to become more and more popular um, you know, where, where do you where do you add empathy into this? Where do you, you know, allow to really hear what the person is saying and to make them feel it's, it's 
at least something is noticing that and allow them to speak freely and not be intimidated by white coat syndrome and so on. So, you know, we don't know yet. This is very, very new, but um, I think it definitely um, has a way to not just, you know, you see a lot of things with chatbots right now on diagnosis and so on. It's very, you know, anesthetic, right? It's, it's clinical questions, but when you move to this, empathy, this ongoing relationship, um, and people share things as they're, go they're going through that, and you observe what's happening as well through sensory data. I mean, as a, to give you an example, we capture more than 20,000 data points per patient per day with this product. Um, this, uh, and as healthcare is becoming more and more data-driven and creating more predictive models and so on, I, I don't know, I'm curious to see what will happen, but I guess we hope that what you'll see is these type of products will become the hub in the home, that sensors are connected to, that digital health is leveraging, whether it's telehealth or other interventions, home tests, um, you know, um, and so on, and connecting back to the medical team that can use it both as a communication device and also a data collection tool to allow them to improve the outcomes of their patients. Well, after hearing all this information, no doubt that this particular technology that you're tapping into that is available, you're certainly impacting people's lives through this product, LEQ, and we can't thank you enough for what you're doing in this space as well. Before you go in in conclusion, any closing thoughts, a final word or a tip or anything else you'd like to share? Yeah, sure. Maybe a call to your audience. I mean, we're looking to, to gather more data and to learn more, so if there are primary care, Medicare Advantage listeners that are interested and, and want to enter into a pilot to do a study to understand and learn more how this could be relevant to you, um, look us up. We'll be super thrilled to talk to you. And Mr. Schooler, if you would hit that website where listeners can get further details and be in touch accordingly or as needed. Just intuitionrobotics.com or send me a note on LinkedIn or an email at door at intuitionrobotics.com. And of course that works and we'll leave a link within the show notes of this broadcast as we always do to further help. Again, Mr. Schooler, all the best. Keep doing what you're doing and thanks for joining us here today. Thank you, Eric. Hey, you're more than welcome anytime. We've been speaking with Doris Schooler, the CEO and co-founder at Intuition Robotics, which creates empathetic digital companions that positively impact people's lives. And for all the details, visit either intuitionrobotics.com or leq. Com. And again, this has been your host, Eric Michaels, and we do thank you for your continued support of the eHealth Radio Network. Join us again soon for another episode that will help further expand your knowledge on those things that are important to your health and wellness. For more eHealth Radio reports, we invite you to visit our main radio channel site at eHealthRadioNetwork.com. And as always, we do thank you for tuning in. Thanks for tuning in to the eHealth Radio Network. For more information or to subscribe to this podcast, visit eHealthRadioNetwork.com.